You are listening to the audio preaching podcast from North Valley Baptist Church in Santa Clara, California, led by Pastor Jack Treber. Though located in the heart of the Silicon Valley, you will hear fervent, old-fashioned revival preaching from the pulpit of North Valley Baptist Church. It is our desire that you will be helped by this gospel message. Acts chapter number 20. Acts chapter number 20. If you find your place, let's stand together. And if you'll give me 30 minutes, we'll get you headed to your activity. And uh, But I'm want to burden about these verses this morning. Amen. Let's begin reading in verse number 7. The Bible said, Upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. There were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. There sat a, in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third law and was taken up dead. Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked for a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. They brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. You can be seated. I want to, you keep your Bible open and we're going to look back into these verses for just a few minutes and I won't be long in preaching as Paul was in our text but uh, as you're looking through these, these verses of Scripture, by, by way of a short introduction, I see there's several kind of church members that you and I can find in this text. Look at verse number 7. The Bible said, Upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread. The first church member I find in our text, it's an attending member. Somebody that comes to church, praise God, for members that come to church. What Brother Treber has been trying to do the last couple of mornings, and I've appreciated it, he has been trying to encourage you to go to church, but not just go to church, but to be engaged in some way or another. You say, I'm a young person, what can I do? I promise you this, you go find a leader, you go find your pastor, you go find a youth pastor, you go find your Sunday school teacher, your bus director, your mission director, whatever it may be, and you volunteer yourself uh, to do something in the work of God, uh, I promise you they will find some area that you can help them in. It may be open the door to the uh, sanctuary while people come in. It may be uh, to walk seniors from a, 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 on a rainy Sunday morning, walk them in with an umbrella so they don't get wet. But if you'll find something to do that God will help you. I wonder how many times as men of God that we've heard people say, well, I, I just didn't get anything out of the service today. I, I just didn't get anything from the Lord. The preaching didn't help me. Uh, the singing didn't help me. Uh, the Sunday school lesson did not help me. Uh, I mean, I just didn't get anything. But can I tell you, uh, if that's your mindset about church, uh, uh, that you always have to come to get something, uh, uh, we may be missing the boat uh, uh, coming to church church is more than just getting something from the Lord. I, I would venture to say it's giving something to the Lord. I, I mean, man, we've just lived on a Sunday. Uh, we've just lived the past six days uh, on the gracious and glorious provisions uh, of a God Almighty. And now we're coming in uh, to the Lord's house on the Lord's day. Uh, wouldn't it be something if you came next Sunday uh, uh, not trying to get a blessing, uh, uh, not trying to get something from the Lord, uh, but you came next Sunday morning uh, 
and you came in your best that you have or you walk in with a great spirit and you say Lord I've not come to get it today I've come to give something I've come to give you my gratitude I've come to give you my obedience I've come to give you my surrender I've come to give you my uh, my joy and my worship uh, when's the last time you came to church uh, to give him something not to get something an attending member but then I see in verse number 9 there's an apathetic member could Eutychus's fall out of the window indicate to us that maybe he was not interested in what was going on. I am a people watcher. I, I like to sit over there so I can sort of scour the crowd. I just That's just who I am. I like to watch how people respond to the preaching. I like how to watch how young people respond to the singing. I like to watch how folks respond to the moving of the Spirit of God in a service. Hey, can I tell you, listen, I, I, and I saw, I've seen folks, man, with tears dripping down their face. I've seen them with hands uh, raised in these few services that we've got to be a part of during the North Valley Youth Conference. Uh, but can I tell you, I've seen others uh, as engaged as some were. Man, you were walking, walking, walking. Uh, and man, you were alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. Uh, I mean, man, you were just playing and running to get to be a part of the game. Uh, uh, but can I tell you, mixed in those folks that were engaged. Uh, there were folks that had a far away look. Uh, they had a disinterested look. Uh, like, man, when are we going to get done? Uh, when are we going to get to rest? I saw some uh, uh, last night after playing that son had just about made you a zombie. You're sitting here trying your best uh, uh, to listen, not to die in the pew. Uh, uh, but can I tell you, we are living in a day uh, uh, the reason that we can't find somebody to stand in the gap uh, is because we have become absolutely Apathetic uh, when it comes to the work of God. Uh, we talk about people going to hell, but we don't care. Uh, we've got brothers and sisters, moms and dads, uh, aunts and uncles that are dying without Christ. Uh, uh, but we just doesn't care, just do not care. Uh, uh, somebody said the greatest blasphemy uh, is uh, listen, being an apathetic Christian. Uh, uh, so we would say, Lord, I believe you're God. Uh, I believe you're the Savior. I believe the Bible's true. Uh, uh, but you just do not excite me anymore. Uh, listen, are you in that place uh, where maybe you're like Eutychus? Uh, I mean, man, as far as uh, uh, your uh, interest in the things of God, uh, uh, could it be that you're apathetic because uh, uh, your church attendance is about uh, as deep as your Christian walk goes? Uh, uh, there's no giving. There's no worshiping. Uh, there's no serving. Uh, all you do is observe. Uh, and as far as being active in the work of God, uh, all you do is watch from afar off. You say, preacher, I can't care about the world. No, but you can care about your best friend. See, our problem is you want your Christian life to change when you talk about lost people. Don't just talk about the lost world. Your, your lost person that you're praying for ought to have a face and a name and an address. Because we pray abstractly for so long, it's easy to get numb to that. But when you get down before God and you close the door of your prayer closet, when you're praying for people, they have faces, and you love them and care about them, it's hard to pray without praying for them. It's hard to ride down the road when you're not thinking about them. Let me ask you something. Do you care? What about this last one that I'll get to the thought what about an awakened member? I don't think Eutychus went back to sleep. I mean, man, that, that the, for the third loft, that's the third story, somewhere between 10 to 15 feet, that would have been in that day. So he fell anywhere from 30 to 40 feet. When he hit the ground, and man, Paul jumped down on him, put his life in him. I don't believe Eutychus went back to sleep. Sometimes at youth camp, I'd sit, I'd sit with a water gun, and I'd sit near Brother Brown, I'd see him go to sleep, I'd shoot him in the face with a water gun. <laughs> you say, I wouldn't do that. Well, I didn't want him to, you know, fall out and bust their head when they were sleeping. Huh? 
And I tell you what, once they got squirted one time, they didn't go back to sleep. Because they just got embarrassed and by all their friends. They didn't want to, they didn't want to see that. And can I say to you, when he fell out of that, when he fell out of that window, I hear people yesterday, you were talking about the young man that maybe got out, and man, God, some folks prayed him back in. You, you see those people that get out and then God graciously brings them back, restores them, put them in the work of God. You don't see many like that get back out because they've seen what the world does. They've seen what the lies of the devil are. They've seen how unfaithful the friends of the world are. And then when they come back, man, they're not looking over there anymore. They're not listening over there anymore. I'm asking you this morning, are you awake? Just a few weeks, we'll have camp at, at church, and we'll have junior week for a few days, and then we'll have a, a worker trip, and then we'll have our teen, our teen week, first time we've got to have it since COVID, and I'm excited about seeing the kids. For the last 15 years, every, every Friday morning about 11 o'clock when they start to pack their bags and pack their buses and go home, one of the, we've done it for years, we'll do it again this year. And it's a sad time to see camp come to an end, but at the very back of the building, man, we'll, we'll line up all those children that'll be at camp, and we'll take one last picture that will commemorate what the Lord has done in our midst in those two weeks of time with the little ones all the way to the teenagers, and we'll line them up. And man, they'll be on top of each other, standing on people's shoulders. I mean, boy, there'll be a crowd of them back there. And I sit there and look as I do every year, what should be a time of celebration in my heart that they're going home. I love to see them come, but after two weeks, I'm ready to see them go. I mean, man, I love them, but when you ain't slept but two hours a night for about 14 days, you're ready to go sleep in your bed. Amen. You can tell I don't fit just in every bed. I have slept in hotels where I've had to put the, my suitcase at the bottom so I could prop my legs up so I didn't have to sleep with my legs bent like that. But it never fails, Brother Brown. I was standing there at the front trying to get them all in line, and it never fails. Not one year. Have I not stood there and looked at that group? And my face is smiling, but my heart's broken. You say, why, preacher? Because I'm looking at that group, some that have been coming at 18-year-olds, some have been coming for a decade, and I've watched them grow up through camp. And I sit there and look at them, and I wonder, who won't be back next year? I'm not talking about aging out of the youth group. I, I, I'm not talking about. I, I, I'm not talking about move to a different church that's, uh, uh, that doesn't come to camp. I'm talking about kids. That more than it made commitments on those altars and made vows to the Lord and uh, God had worked in their heart. Uh, uh, but just like the preacher said this morning, outside the door there's a world waiting on them and outside of uh, uh, the trip. And when they get home, there's sin and, and there's folks that are, uh, uh, that are competing for their attention and competing for their affection. And I wonder next year when their group leader comes and I ask about that individual, if that youth leader asks, to drop their head uh, or maybe tears will begin to flow down their cheek uh, and they say preacher let me tell you about that uh, they're not with us and they begin to share uh, of the burden of that young person uh, uh, that's not moved to a different church uh, uh, that's not just aged out of the group uh, uh, but sin has came into their life uh, and wrecked their life and now they're out altogether. I want to preach for about 10 or 12, 13 minutes on this thought about Eutychus. He was sitting in the right place, but he was leaning in the wrong direction. He was in the right place. Eutychus was at church. He didn't fall out off of a bar stool. He didn't feel like he didn't fall out of a party. He didn't fall out of some wicked act. He was in a good place. 
I mean, man, I'm not here to fuss. I, I'm thinking this. Listen, you look at our, our scripture tonight, verse number seven. It said the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread. I mean, man, I'm talking about a commendable presence. He's not running out to the world. He's not out there uh, trying to find a party. He's not inebriated. He's sober in his right mind at the house of God. I mean, look, his presence at church. Uh, he was there while they were having service. Uh, and can I tell you, an old preacher told me years ago, excuse me, an old layman told me years ago, he said, son, I tell young Christians this, if they'll read their Bible, learn how to pray, and stay in church, they can make it uh, all the way home. Amen? Uh, I'm telling you, that's not hard to do. Uh, if you'll just go to church, uh, if you'll stay in the Word of God, uh, and you'll learn how to pray, uh, uh, you don't have to go out to the world. Uh, uh, your heart does not have to be wrecked uh, uh, by sin and by the uh, snares of the devil. Uh, uh, but you can make it. You can marry in the will of God. Uh, uh, you can raise your children in the will of God. Uh, uh, you can serve him and give him all you got. Uh, I'm telling you, I said yesterday, uh, uh, we think about, man, it's easy to understand. Uh, uh, people need to get saved out of the ghetto, uh, uh, get saved out of the gutter. Uh, uh, but man, it's hard for us sometimes to fathom uh, uh, some people need to get saved off a church pew, uh, off out of a choir loft, uh, out of a Sunday school room, uh, out of a church pew. Uh, and can I tell you, everybody that falls out uh, uh, doesn't do it from the dark recesses of the world. Uh, uh, some of you sitting here this morning, uh, uh, you are in the right place, but you are leaning in the wrong direction. We've about got to the place where we think Hebrews 10, 25 is a suggestion. It's not even a suggestion or an invitation. It is a command. People say, well, I do you really need to have Sunday night church and Wednesday night church? The Bible said, forsake not the sin of yourselves together as a matter of some is. But so much the more as you see the day approaching. We don't need to be cutting the back. We need to be adding to I'm talking about a commendable presence. He was at church. Not only was he in the, his presence in the house of God, but what about the preaching of the Word of God? You understand, fellas, Eutychus was listening to the greatest preacher outside of Jesus Christ himself. I mean, man, Brother Brown, he was listening to the Apostle Paul, the Hebrew of the Hebrews, a Hebrew blue bud. I mean, he was a master of the law. Uh, but Brother Flood, he just wasn't uh, but the best the Jews had to offer. He wrote, we, uh, we know 13 books of the Bible. I believe 14 books of the Bible. I mean, that 14 is that, he is that number of national deliverance in the Word of God. He was the apostle to the Gentiles. He did bring deliverance because of what had God done. He had unlocked the mysteries of the grace of God. He had unlocked the mysteries of the church. He had unlocked the mysteries of the second coming to the apostle Paul. This wasn't just some boy getting started. This was the very best the Lord had to offer. I don't think... Paul was a boring preacher. I think Eutychus might have just got bored with the preaching. And you may be in the best church in your area with a preacher that loves you. And that's a great place to be. But that may not be enough if you're leaning in the wrong direction. Number two, quickly, I'm, I'm hurrying. Not just this commendable presence, but look at verse 9. It said, there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus being fallen into a deep sleep. Not just his commendable presence, but what about his crucial position? The Bible said that he sat in a window. Can I say it this way? He was on the edge of his seat. The window that he was in was the dividing line between the inside and the outside. 
It separates that which is within and that which is without. Are you sitting right there on the brink of being in or being out? Eutychus is a picture of a child of God that's not all the way in, but he's not all the way out. How many folks do we preach to on a weekly basis? Man, they're saved. They're going to heaven. Their name is recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you die, you're going to heaven, but you're not all the way in. Uh, you're not sold out. You're not surrendered. Uh, you've not given your life to listen a uh, uh, holy with hands off to Christ uh, uh, to use in any way sees fit. Yeah, yet you're not out in the world. You're not at the parties. Uh, you're not doing this and you're not doing that. Uh, you're not all in the world but you're not all in this thing called the Christian life either. Can I say this? One old preacher, Alexander McLaren, said it this way. He said, the measure of your discord with the world is the same measure of your accord with Christ. People say, well, then they just against everything. Let me tell you something, when you get saved and you fall in love with Christ, let me tell you what you'll do. You'll hate what he hates and you'll love what he loves. Amen. Everybody wants all the love and all that, but let me tell you something, as much as he loves some things, if you'll read our Bible, he hates some things as well. People say, well, you ought not to say anything about sin. Well, let me tell you something. It's the law of sin. God forbid. He said, I've not known sin. Had it not been for the law, you wouldn't know you need to be a Christian. You wouldn't know you need a Savior. If somebody had ever said anything about sin, what are you saying, preacher? Gypsy Smith said it this way. If you're out, if you're in with Christ, you're out with the world. If you're in with the world, you're out with Christ. The old preacher of Aunt Shadner, I love to read him. He said, listen, this world that we're living in, he said, they're not laughing at Christians. He said, they're disgusted with us. He said, but there ain't nobody living, no li living a Christian life that's evidence of a dynamic, transforming experience of Christ and salvation that makes us love uh, what we used to hate and hate what we used to love. Have you ever got to that place uh, where somebody in your life said, man, uh, something happened to you. You are different. Uh, you're not the same person you used to be. Uh, you don't want to go where you used to go and act like you used to act and talk like you used to talk. Uh, uh, you're different. You are new. That's what the testimony of the Christian life ought to be. He's on the edge of his seat. What about the evidence of his sleep? Notice what your Bible said, verse 9. He sunk down with sleep. And fell down from the third loft. In my own mind, around that, that suggests to me that it just didn't happen all of a sudden. That it was gradual. You get, you know, those first few nods, it's not a deep nod. You just, mm, you feel yourself getting a little sleepy. Then all of a sudden it's, and you're out. You say, preacher, what should I do? At the first sign, you're getting sleepy. At the first sign, you're getting drowsy. You better run to Christ. Are you listening to me? You say, preacher, why did he fall out? This is real deep theology. Y'all ready? He fell in the direction he was leaning. If you're leaning to the world, you'll fall out to the world. If you're leaning to contemporary liberal mindsets, you will fall that way. You better, you better be real careful what you let your mind entertain. 
The Bible said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Because when you begin to, when you begin to let your mind wander into the world and your mind wander into the flesh and your mind wander into sin, before you know it, you're, you listen, you're in church. Uh, uh, you're in church, man. You're in church, but you're leaning and you're leaning and you're leaning. Uh, and before you know it, you're in the right place, uh, uh, but you're leaning in the wrong direction. Uh, and before you know it, you have fallen out of the window. I wonder if I could walk back and Pastor Treber and I could walk back in this hallway and take the youth directors out there with us. And I wonder if I could ask them, do you have some kids that are in the right place but are leaning the wrong direction? Here's my question. Would they tell me your name? Would they say, preacher, this is a good young man. Got a lot of potential to do something for God. They're in the right place. Can I just say the bigger you are, the easier it is for you to tip over? I'll be honest with you, I'm going to, come here, Brother Flood. I'm not picking on you, just come here for a minute. If he and I were standing on the precipice of this, I will fall before he does because he's closer to the ground. The more my top side gets over, <laughs> I'll go down. And could it be that some of you that are standing tall in your group right now, you may be the quickest to fall out if you're not careful. In the right place. I could... I could bring Brother Brown, I could bring Brother Treber, I could bring Brother Swanson, and we could stand here all afternoon and tell you about children that were in a great place, but they leaned the wrong direction. I'm almost done. Brother Ken, come back to the piano. That was the personal effect. But what about the problematic effect? I wonder, I wonder... I wonder, Brother Treber, if the reason that we don't read about anybody getting saved in this meeting was because Eutychus was in the window and he was obstructing the breeze. I wonder that the reason Eutychus' friends didn't get saved is because since he was sitting on the edge in the window, the breeze was not blowing like it could have been. I wonder in your group, you're in the right place, but you're leaning in the wrong direction. But where you are sitting in your own spiritual life is not just hindering you, but it's blocking the breeze from your friend. I'm going to have enough to answer for, for what I've done in my own life. I don't want to have to answer for what has happened to somebody else. How about you? Talented, gifted, cool, got a little swag to you. Got that little dip and roll when you walk. That's the ones I look for at camp. I mean, they coming in the door when we playing those first games, and it's pretty rough that first day. I watch them guys walk in and got that little, got that little bump in their walk. I'm like, man, I, I need to help them with that. <laughs> if something's in their shoe. I need, to, I need to help them. That young lady that walks in, she's got three and a half gallons of mascara on and six inches of makeup. And man, she's, she didn't come to camp looking for Jesus. She came to camp looking for her husband. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. That's right. I think camp's a good place to get, I mean, get a wife. Her Somebody, is that a key right there? Some, no, that's some of my sunglasses. Man, that's bad, y'all. Breaking sunglasses and throwing them at me. I wonder with all that you've got, 
I wonder if one of your best friends will die without Christ because you blocked the wind out of their life. Thank you for listening to the audio preaching podcast from North Valley Baptist Church in Santa Clara, California, led by Pastor Jack Treber. For more information about our ministry or to find out how to get in contact with us, visit our website at nvbc.org. May God bless you as you serve Him this week.